Hello, I'm Neil Feit of the SUNY Fredonia Department of Philosophy. This screencast is going to be on some of the basic concepts of deductive logic, validity, soundness, and formal validity. For my intro logic students, this will supplement uh, much of chapter 1 of our book 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Uh, let's get a start by looking at some examples here. Here is a, an argument. This one happens to have two premises and one conclusion, but that's just an artifact. An argument could have just one premise or many, many premises. Every collie is a dog. Every dog is a mammal. Therefore, every collie is a mammal. Besides being boring, a couple of things might strike you about this argument. All of the statements are true. Another thing that might strike you is that this argument intuitively seems like it's good reasoning. The premises support the conclusion. We're going to call this feature validity, and we're going to label this argument valid. Okay, if we add that to the fact that the premises are true, we get the result that the argument is what we're going to call sound. Okay, very soon we're going to talk about definitions of these concepts. Let's contrast this with an argument on the right. Every dog is a gerbil, every gerbil drinks motor oil, therefore every dog drinks motor oil. Okay, um, a couple of things might strike you about this argument. First of all, everything's false. But second of all, and more important from a logical point of view, um, the reasoning here seems just as good as it does on the left-hand side. The premises support the conclusion uh, to just the same extent that they do as, as in the argument on the left-hand side. So we're going to call this argument valid as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The way we're going to criticize it, after all, it has a false conclusion. The way we're going to criticize it is to say that it's unsound. Okay? Let's take a look at some definitions of these concepts. So here's the concept of validity. A valid argument is one in which it's necessary that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is true. Okay? This if that I put in italics here is important. Okay? As we just saw about the dogs and gerbils, we had false premises leading to a false conclusion, but the argument was still valid. That's because the argument was such that it's necessary that if the premises were true, the conclusion would be true too. And an invalid argument is simply the opposite of that, not valid. Um, soundness is defined as follows. A sound argument is a valid argument in which all of the premises are true. Okay? So to be sound, an argument has to meet two conditions. Um, condition one is there has to be that relation of support. It has to be a valid argument. And condition two is more factual. All the premises have to be true. All of them have to be true. So an unsound argument is simply one that's not sound. And it follows that either one or both of those conditions is not satisfied. So either it's not valid or it has a false premise, at least one false premise. So here's the argument that we just saw. Um, it is necessary that if these premises are true, you know, if dogs are gerbils and gerbils drink motor oil, well then dogs drink motor oil. The conclusion is true. But since not all the premises are true, the argument is not sound. So here's a valid argument that's not sound. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you a chart. Lots of combinations of truth values of premises conclusions and um, arguments that are either valid or sound. In a moment or two, I'll invite, I'll invite you to, to pause the video and take a look. But, and I'm, I'm not going to go over this chart in detail, but um, let's take a look at the first row here. Here we have all true premises and a true conclusion. If you, if you know that about an argument, you can't conclude that the argument is valid or invalid. Okay? The argument might be valid, as this one on the left is, or it might be invalid, with true premises leading to a true conclusion, as this one on the right is. I put this one here on the left in scarlet font to indicate that it's sound. It's a valid argument with all true premises. It meets the definition of soundness. That's the only one on this chart that's sound. Okay? Um, you could have false premises and a false conclusion. Can you conclude that it's invalid? Nope. Uh, the one we just saw is a valid argument with that uh, array of truth values. And so on down the line. You could have all false premises in the second to last row here leading to a true conclusion. That tells you nothing about whether the argument is valid or not. Okay? The only thing that does tell you something is in this last row. If you have all true premises and a false conclusion, you know the argument has to be invalid. The, the valid spot is blank here because um, a valid argument with all true premises must have a true conclusion. So if it has a false conclusion, it can't be valid. That's the only way you could tell something about the validity of the argument if you know something about the truth and falsehood of its statements. Okay? I do invite you to pause the, argu the um, video rather and take a look at um, the arguments on this slide. Let's take a look now at the idea of a formally valid argument. Here's the definition. A formally valid argument is one that's valid in virtue of its form. 
That is, every instance of its pattern of reasoning is a valid argument. A form is just a pattern of reasoning. We'll say a little bit more about that, not too much in this video. Um, consider this argument. Pat is a violinist, therefore Pat is a musician. It's a valid argument. A violinist is, is simply a type of musician. So if Pat's a violinist, even, even a terrible violinist, then Pat's a musician, perhaps a terrible musician. Um, even though this argument is valid, it's not formally valid. Okay, so we're going to use this to introduce the idea of formal validity. Um, basically, Pat is a violinist is not an especially logical statement. It has no real logical structure. Let's just call that P, and we'll call the second line there Q. So the, the form of this argument is P, therefore Q. And you could put any old true statement in for P and any old false statement in for Q. You get a true premise and a false conclusion with this form of reasoning, this form of reasoning, and you would show that this form of reasoning is not a valid form of reasoning. Okay, So a bit more about forms. A form is simply a pattern of reasoning. It's what you get when you keep the logical vocabulary of an argument and replace the non-logical vocabulary with variables or placeholders. And that's kind of what we did up here. We, we used P and Q as placeholders, and we replaced premise 1 and premise 2 with them. So here's a little bit more about logical versus non-logical vocabulary. The words on the left-hand side of the screen here are part of the logical vocabulary of English. Words like not, and, or, the phrase if then. If I say something like no lizards or mammals, um, that word no there is, is an, a logical word. If I say something like all dogs are mammals, that's a logical word, similar with some. Some lawyers are honest. Um, that, that some has a logical force. Whereas these words on the the right, like bicycle and fish and violinist, those are non-logical words. Um, roughly, roughly, roughly speaking, if I wanted to explain the word bicycle to someone who didn't know it, I could point to several bicycles. I could point, I could point, I could point and say, that's a bicycle. That's what bicycle means. And I could not do anything approaching that with lo logical words. Um, let's say a little bit about forms and counterexamples, because if you're one of my students especially, or an, if an intro logic student in general, you might be faced with the task of giving a counterexample to show that a certain argument is formally invalid. So a counterexample to an argument form is an instance of the form. So you've, you've got to have an instance of that same form in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Basically, a counterexample is, is, is essentially a tool to show that an argument is invalid by showing that you could take uh, an, an argument of that form and have it lead you from truth into falsehood, true premises into false conclusion. Valid argument forms have no counterexamples. Okay, so before we get to some counterexamples, let's just talk about valid argument forms which have none. Uh, here's one example. Neil is talking, that's me. If Neil's talking, then Neil's awake, therefore Neil's awake. Here's the form. I replaced Neil's talking with P, and I did that in premise 2. I left the logical vocabulary if then in there. This is a form known as mo modus ponens. It's a valid argument form. I dare you to put in sentences for P and Q and get true premises leading to a false conclusion. You're not going to do it. Here's example number two. The, the example in number one is um, of the sort that we're going to call statement logic. Here in number two, it's of the sort we're going to call predicate logic. All athletes are tall. No biologists are tall. Therefore, no biologists are athletes. Okay, um, That's a valid argument. And it's a formally valid argument because this form is valid. It's not going to have any counterexamples. Notice that I left the words all, no, and no in there. Okay, it's, it's important to, to keep all where it is or to keep no where it is. I put an A for athletes, B for tall, and C for biologists. And you try as you might, you're not going to come up with um, a counterexample by putting words or phrases in for A and B and C here and uh, getting true premises leading into a false conclusion. I dare you. Email me if you um, come up with something. Um, for invalid forms, we will be able to supply counterexamples. Okay, so invalid argument forms will have counterexamples, and such counterexamples will show that arguments with those forms are formally invalid. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here's one in statement logic. If Neil is smiling, then Neil is happy. Neil is not smiling, therefore Neil is not happy. Um, a lot of intro students are inclined initially to think that this is uh, a valid argument, but it's not. Here's the form. Remember we said that the word not is a logical word. So Neil is smiling is P, and Neil is not smiling is not P. Okay? Um, you can show that this argument is invalid, and in fact this form is invalid, 
uh, by coming up with a counterexample. You need an argument that has form number one here, but where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Here's one. Counterexample number one. If Obama is a movie star, then Obama is famous. That's true. Okay. A movie star is conceptually someone who's famous in virtue of starring on the screen. Obama is not a movie star. That's also true. Okay. Therefore, Obama's not famous. Well, that's false. Obama's quite famous. So this argument has the same form, if you think about it, as the original example, form number one, but it has true premises leading to a, a false conclusion. That shows form number one is an invalid form, and example number one is a formally invalid argument. Okay. Here's one in um, predicate logic. It's a, an example from the chart previously. Some books are hiking trails. Some novels are hiking trails. Well, therefore, some books are novels. Okay. Well, that conclusion is true, but this argument is invalid, so the, the premises provide no reason at all to believe the conclusion here. I put the form here, leaving the logical word sum in and putting A in for books and B for hiking trails and C for novels. Um, I invite you to pause and perhaps try to come up with a counterexample to this argument. Here's one. So here's counterexample number two. Notice I kept sum, 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 and the logical vocabulary must stay the same in order to have the same form as the original argument. Um, some cats are pets, that's true. Some A's are B's. Some dogs are pets, some C's are B's, that's also true. Therefore, some cats are dogs, that's, that's false. That shows that this pattern of reasoning is not a good one. It's invalid. It could lead us from truth into falsehood, into error. Okay, before concluding this video, I'm going to take a brief look at an example from the Power of Logic web tutor. Here I am at the main menu. I'm going to select Chapter 1 exercises. I'm going to scroll down. I'll try 1.3b. I'll um, make it user choice and select. Okay. I'm going to go down to number 16 here. I'll highlight it for you for a minute. Um, all rock musicians are cool. No nerds are cool. Oh, excuse me. No nerds are rock musicians. Therefore, no nerds are cool. Okay, yeah, this might strike you intuitively as a valid argument. It's not. We're told that it's invalid, in fact. Um, and if you kind of get this wrong the first time, you could uh, highlight it like this and copy and paste it into your homework report template if you're one of my students. I'm going to select this. The instructions are here, by the way, up here. Um, the web tutor here makes it easy on us in a couple of ways. It leaves the logical vocabulary in here. So all, no, and no are in there. Um, if you were doing this on a quiz, for example, for your class, and you put like all, 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 for example, instead of all, no, no, um, you'd, you'd automatically get the problem wrong because a counterexample has got to have the same form as the argument that you're trying to show to be invalid. Okay. Um, another way that I think the web tutor makes things easier is it gives us a, a short list of possible um, replacements. So here we're essentially treating rock musicians as A's and we're, we're putting something in for A's, Collie's dogs. Okay. Um, one tip that I could give you here is to work with the conclusion first. Try to make the conclusion false first. Remember, a counterexample has to have a, a false conclusion. And then let that filter up. Okay. Um, another thing that I could tell you is if, if, if you replace, for example, if you put fish in for rock musicians, you have to do that wherever you see rock musicians. Okay, fish. Okay. You have to substitute um, placeholders, or in, or in this case, um, words for, for the same concepts uniformly. You can't put fish for rock musicians in line one and put mammals for them in line two. Okay. Um, I invite you to pause the video and try to come up with a counterexample um, on a piece of paper, for example, or something like that. What I'm going to do um, is basically give you the form of this argument in a minute and um, give you a, maybe some of you a little bit of help with that. Okay, so here's the form of this argument. Okay. Notice that I want the premise here to be true. All A things I want to be B things. So I'm going to draw kind of a big circle here and I'm going to make, make it B things. So B things are in the circle. And I'm going to put A things entirely within that circle. So they're A things. Okay. So, oh, I don't know. A might be apples and B might be fruit. All apples are fruit. Okay. Um, so I've made all A's or B's. Uh, in the diagram, I've made the first premise true. I also want to make this second premise true. So no C things or A things. I don't want to put 
a C circle inside that A circle. But I also remember I want to make the conclusion false in a counterexample. No, I want it to be false that no C's are B's. So I want to make at least some C's to be B's. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put the C circle here. Okay. I'm going to put some C's in there. So basically. Um, the diagram shows that this argument is invalid. All A's are B's. The A circle is in the B circle. No C's are A's. The C circle is entirely out of the A circle. But it's false that no C's are B's because here, here's a C thing here, okay, which is entirely within the B circle, so it's also a B thing, okay. So if you, this might help you come up with a real English counterexample because, for example, um, you want A's and C's to both be B's, but not to be, oh. Um, intermingled, so to speak. So for example, A's might be um, dogs, and B's might be cats, and, and B might be mammals, because dogs and cats are both mammals, but no, no dogs or cats. Okay? And this might help you um, do the exercises in the, the web tutor and, and in general to, to find counterexamples to arguments. So for example, I could take that and I could um, Say all dogs are mammals. Okay. Notice I put dogs in for rock musicians. So I'm going to do that here. Dogs for rock musicians. And I put mammals for cool. Mammals for cool. Okay. Um, and if I say no cats or dogs, put cats in for nerds. Okay. It's kind of like I made dogs and cats the what the A and the C circle from that diagram, and mammals the bigger B circle. And if I click here to check it tells me that my counterexample is correct. Okay, So very brief review. We've talked about some basic concept of deductive logic, um, validity, soundness, and formal validity. And we've talked about the idea of giving a counterexample to a, a formally invalid argument.